Hi, and welcome to episode 65 of the Give Me a Crown Knitting, Spinning and Bits and Pieces podcast. My name's Nina, also known as Give Me a Crown across the internet, and today is Friday the 24th of February 2017. Uh, It's been a few weeks in between podcasts again, and it will be again for the next few episodes. Things are just a little bit busy, so thank you for bearing with me. But a big hello to the new subscribers out there. I know that there's been a bit of a jump in numbers, which is always great to see. And hello, of course, to returning viewers. This week, I will be showing a finished object. And I also have some works in progress, as well as some acquisitions and a bit of chatter at the end. And there's a giveaway somewhere in between in this episode. So stay tuned for that. I will start with finished object. And that is my once upon a sock. So in the last episode, I showed the yarn that I spun from Ren and Ollie, which is an Australian yarn fiber maker extraordinaire and yarn dyer. And, um, and I had spun up some merino nylon blended yarn and I decided to knit some socks and they kind of flew off the needles because I love knitting with hand spun. So the Once Upon a Star is the main colour, and then I use some Novita Nalle, which is a finish, a fairly rugged finish yarn for the toes, heels and cuffs. I started off using some Knit Picks Stroll in a yellow colour for the toes, and I started knitting these toe up, but I was finding that the gauge difference between the Stroll fingering and my hand spun was too great, so it sort of the sock bloomed as I was knitting along the foot. So I decided to rip back and start again with the Novi Tanale yarn. And it was asked in the forums recently about whether or not this yarn might be good for garments. And I would say not for next to skin garments. It has a bit of a rugged feel. It's, I would say it's rougher than Red Gear, for instance. And Red Gear is not exactly the softest yarn, but it works really well for socks socks and mittens and and outerwear. So it's something that I have a lot of in my stash because I'm from Finland and I have picked up some on my travels. I love being able to use it and just makes me think of my far away home. So I started using that and knit with the hand spun. I was using two and a half millimeter needles, which I probably could have gone up to a three millimeter needle. It's a fairly dense fabric, but I think it's going to wear really well. My stripes that I was kind of hoping for didn't eventuate too much. There's some sort of sections of striping, but I had started the spin without a huge consideration for how I was going to spin it. So Mia, who is the wonderful person behind Ren and Ollie, she actually spun up the same braid. And on her Instagram Ren and Ollie account, you'll see how she has use the same braid and come up with a completely different result. So she segmented the colours to keep the depth and vibrancy of the colours and to create much more significant stripes. So mine are sort of blended, but I still love the effect. I love how how they're just sort of subtle, subtle colour changes going on. And viewing them up close, you actually get a lot more random little pops of colour. So I know that nobody's going to be staring at my toes, but it made it made for a fun knit. So they're my socks. They've got, um, they're a little bit wrinkly looking on my sock blockers because they're, I knit them fairly tall. So what I did was I knit along the foot and I measured some of my old socks to figure out where my heel started on those. And I put in some scrap yarn to do an afterthought heel. I then knit along the leg and I wasn't sure how long to knit the leg because I wanted to try to use up a fair amount of the the hand spun yarn, but I wasn't sure if it was going to start getting too tight on my calf. So I ended up putting the afterthought heel in to be able to um, measure how how the sock was fitting. I then knit a little bit further because I was happy with the with how it was feeling on my on my calf, and then I put in a two by two rib up the top. So the afterthought heel is something that I'm only sort of recently playing around with and this is a it looks a bit sort of 
odd on the sock blocker, but it fits really nicely on the heel. It sort of cups the heel. It has a sort of decreases at six different points. So it sort of creates a nice rounded heel. I'm not sure I'm completely sold on the afterthought heel. It just feels a bit fiddly for me for having to add it in at the end. I like my top down socks, so I'm not sure I'm a complete convert to toe up socks and afterthought heels, but it's nice to be able to have it in my in my knitting knowledge so that in particular, if I'm knitting with self-striping yarns, then I can always pop one in and it keeps the striping sequence going with the rest of the sock so you don't interrupt the striping. I think that's pretty much all that I had to say about those. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to wearing those once the weather cools down again. We've had some strange weather lately, so I'm sure that I'll be needing them pretty soon. And I mentioned, did I mention that I'm in the central west of New South Wales in Australia for anyone who's interested, um, which is a kind of hilly area. So we don't get the, don't get the nice breeziness of Sydney, for instance, but we get some of the heat of the outback and then we get some of the frost of the wintry times because we're up high. So anyway, a bit of a tangent. So I have some works in progress. And the first of which is my free spirit pullover. And it's grown a bit since last time. And this is a stripey pullover and I'm working on the body. And I think last time I'd been where that marker was. I'm pretty sure I put that in after my last podcast. So I've done a few inches. I have definitely been paying more attention to my socks and the other work in progress that I've got. So I haven't got as far as I expected to, but it's still growing. And now that my socks are finished, I think I'll hop back onto this. So I'm kind of at the point where I need to just measure to see how long it is on my body and then figure out how much longer I want to knit to um, before I start doing the ribbing. So the striping sequence is all provided in the pattern and it actually provides a lot more of the striping sequence so you can basically keep going and going and going if you want to. I thought I would show the inside of this if I can untangle. There are five yarns going on at the same time so it gets a little bit tangly but this is how the colour management or yarn management works on the inside. So there's a faux seam, fake seam, going along the side and then the colours get dragged along and sort of easily wrapped. So there's some instructions in the pattern or links to instructions about how to manage the colour. And when I've tried it on before, I didn't notice the colours or the yarns at all. So it's pretty clever. and. I'm kind of looking forward to getting onto the sleeves and getting this one done because I've got some other big projects that I want to be knitting soon. I've been trying to find some yarn for a skirt, but I'm just struggling to figure out what yarn base I should be using. So if anyone has any suggestions for yarns that can be um, can be purchased in Australia in particular that might be suitable for hard wearing skirts, then I'd love to know. It's I'd love to make it something exotic, but I just think that because I'll be sitting on it, then it probably needs to be a little bit more hard wearing so that I get a lot of a lot of years out of it. So I'd love to know any recommendations for skirt yarns. And because of the larger quantity of yarn that I'll need, it's going to be more cost effective if I if I order it from Australia. So I'd love to know. So my next work in progress is a spin. So this is some fibre that I picked up at the House of Wool in Blackheath back in, I think it was November. And I'm trying to do a very fine spin. And this is a third of the fibre. This is a third and they look quite different. And that's because I've actually hidden a, a spin that didn't quite 
get finished underneath this bobbin because I've only got a few bobbins. So I've sort of left the fibre that I had been spinning underneath there. That's why it looks a bit fatter. So I've got these two and what I'm planning to do is actually a three ply, a true three ply. So I split the fibre into three parts and see what happens. I'm aiming for a sort of a shawl spin. So I'm trying to get the, um, the singles as fine as possible so that I'm going to hopefully get maybe a sport weight yarn for a shawl. And it's a merino silk content, so it should still have a bit of drape. And this is a single that I sort of pulled off before I started the spinning, just to sort of see how, how it went. All my singles are, or all my sort of doubled up singles are looking a bit random in width. I haven't washed this or anything and I was sort of getting used to the fibre so I'm not entirely sure what I was trying to do with this but it just gave me an idea of approximately how much twist to put in. I'm a bit of a fly by the seat of my pants spinner. I'm kind of learning as I go and I don't put probably enough thought into my spinning but I just enjoy it. I find it very peaceful to be sitting there with a wheel and, and making yarn. So this just gave me a bit of an idea that going for the three ply should be okay and that I wanted a bit more twist in it. So I just had a big long single and then I sort of folded it up and folded it up again and so it sort of joined up there in the middle. Don't know why I decided to do that. Some people do control cards where they spin up a single and ply it and wash it and do everything all all very organized but it's not quite me but this has given me a good idea of what I want to achieve even though I haven't actually done a three ply in this because originally I was going to do a two ply but um, just because of the the length of color in my fiber it's a blended fiber so some of the colors sort of overlap and I think that if I if I use a three ply to finish up the yarn then the colour segments will be sort of melded a little bit more so that it's not going to be too obviously stripy especially on a shawl where I'd be worried that once like if it's a crescent shaped shawl for instance that towards the end I might get sort of sections of colour that um, might look a little bit odd but I'm sure it'll turn out beautiful regardless of whichever way I'd have done it because it's a beautiful fibre. Um, I think that's it for what I've been working on. I was planning to share my yarn and fibre usage for January, but January is gone ages ago and now February is pretty much almost gone and I've been a little bit hectic so I haven't sort of put all the details into my spreadsheet that I'd been meaning to. So I'm going to try to do that for the next episode and I'll sort of do a January and February yarn usage. I'm definitely using, I'm definitely getting in more than I'm using, but it all even out as the year goes along, I'm sure. And on to acquisitions. I have been kindly given a copy of the Quiet Day Shawl Pattern by Minna Sorvala. She's recently released this shawl pattern on Ravelry and it's a beautiful crescent shaped shawl which has been knit from multiple colours and it has eyelets and I'll pop in a picture of it here. But she's kindly offered up a giveaway prize to the Give Me a Crown podcast group. So what we'd like you to do is either comment in the Ravelry Give Me a Crown groups episode thread for this episode or comment down below on YouTube and let us know if you have a favourite yarn or yarn base for knitting shawls or if you have a favourite shawl pattern that you like to go to. If you happen to want to answer all of the above then that's fine but at least let us know the yarn, yarn base, or favourite shawl pattern, and you'll be in with a chance to win. I'll do the drawing on the next episode, so it's likely to be a couple of weeks away, and um, and we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on shawl yarns and shawl patterns. So good luck. Um, I have also received a prize. So Ren and Ollie has been having a bit of a giveaway on her... Instagram account. So what you need to do is if you have some Ren and Ollie in your stash or you're working with some Ren and Ollie, then you just have to tag Ren and Ollie. And, um, and she's been drawing winners once a month. And I happen to win. 
and I got sent these. So these are some beautiful Renanoli sock yarns, wonderful colours, and absolutely perfect because I haven't been knitting on my sock yarn blanket recently. So they're definitely going in there, but I'm also hoping I will definitely have leftovers so then I'll be able to use them for some other projects as well. But what I'm hoping to do is waiting until my free spirit pullover is finished so I'll have some very sort of muted colours and I'll be able to do a row where I alternate these with the muted colours just to uh, have a very special row in my blanket. So thank you Mia, they're absolutely gorgeous. I love Ren and Ollie sock yarns. I've knit a pair of socks from her yarn before and they're going going well after a few years but I, I think that Ren and Ollie was the first indie dyer that I'd actually bought yarn from so I got another skein at the same time and it's just been sitting in my stash for a few years and it's because I love it so much and it it's just such a gorgeous skein that I'm worried about using it that I might not do it justice but I also love looking at it so these will definitely get used. I also had another acquisition, so I ordered a this way, two and a half millimeter nine inch circular, and this is a high high sharp, and I ordered this from Exquisite Yarns over in Western Australia, and she currently has a giveaway code for Give Me a Crown viewers, so if you pop in the coupon code Give Me a Crown on her Etsy shop then you'll get 15% off until the, I think it's the 14th of July. So these, and she sells yarn as well. Like most of the, what she sells is yarn. But these, I got these because I recently tried these small circulars for the first time and I got to 2.25 millimeter needles. And I found that I was knitting very, very tightly on my socks. So I decided that I should get a two and a half millimeter and just see how that affects my gauge because I think that it will just loosen up my gauge a little bit and I'll get slightly less bulletproof socks. So I'm looking forward to giving these a whirl. I have a feeling I know exactly what yarn I'm going to use but um, I've got a few other things that I want to cast on like the quiet day shawl so mm, but I don't have any well I do have socks on the go that have been sitting around for a little while. I think I might have two pairs of socks on the go. I'll have to check my works in progress, but they'll definitely be getting a whirl soon. And I think that they will work better for me than my 2.25 millimetre. I'm sure my 2.25 millimetre would be absolutely fine if I just loosened up my gauge. So, but these are great. And then it's just a little bit of chatter at the end. Um, we've been having some crazy weather out here going from over 40 degrees Celsius some days to about eight degrees Celsius at night, which is just, just mind boggling that the temperature can change so much. But a week ago, we, it was, we had some crazy weather about a week and a half ago where the temperature was extreme and got some alerts on the phone saying that there, there could be potential bushfires and there were in other areas, but not near here. But a week ago, it was a slightly less extreme weather day, but there was some lightning in the air and I heard this enormous thunderclap. And then about 10 minutes later, I was looking out my studio window and I saw smoke billowing from a hill. And I checked on the Rural Fire Services uh, website and they have a map which shows all the fires that are happening around New South Wales. And sure enough, there was a fire out there and sort of watched it for a little while, sort of seeing what's going on. And over maybe 15 minutes, the information updated again. And that's kind of rare for a fire because they tend to just sort of update slowly because they're usually kind of small, but they, the size of the fire was increasing. The smoke was getting worse and then the, sort of the level of uh, fire danger was increasing. So it went to a yellow for anyone who knows uh, the New South Wales fire levels. A little bit later, 
smoke gets even more. I'm running around the house trying to just check that there's no no embers flying around, no ash flying around because one of the worst things is that it was a very windy day so the chances of ash and embers flying a long distance isn't isn't that unheard of so I'm just sort of checking around for that sort of figuring out what I needed to pack didn't actually end up packing too much which I think I will plan for better next time but I plan I, I packed a little bit put my jeans on just in case there were um even though it was hot but it just means that I was protected if if there was any any uh, embers flying around. The smoke started coming into the house um, and just sort of the whole village basically got coated in smoke and then I saw the planes flying overhead and the alert level went up to red uh, which is extreme and or emergency and got text messages saying that it's too late to leave which was a little bit misleading because technically there was still the opportunity to get on the highway and, and get out and I was just watching it and hoping and thankfully the fireys managed to get everything under control so I'm very thankful to the volunteers that fight bushfires it's just an incredible thing for them to do to put their lives in danger and to protect other people and it ended up burning I think it was a hundred and 80 hectares or something and considering that our little village is probably a couple of hectares and it was five kilometers away or about three miles so it it actually could have got here very very quickly and um thankfully they got it under control and oof, it was just it it was not fun and yeah it got my heart racing it was I've been near bushfires before but nothing of that size and nothing where they've been sort of trying to tell people to evacuate and and all that Ugh, horrible horrible but it's it was over uh the night time was a little bit hairy just sort of not really wanting to go to sleep knowing that it was still sort of out there and uh over the following days the rural fire service went there and uh were putting out what whatever was still smoldering so Thankfully, it's all sort of being looked after now and all is well, but uh, hopefully that's the last of it for this for this summer. Apart from that, I've been contemplating what I should start planting for autumn. So I think that I do a bit better in my garden with things that grow above ground than underground because my underground things like carrots and beetroots have been sort of minute, but I've managed to get lettuces and zucchinis and a few strawberries growing and herbs. So. I'm looking at broccoli and cauliflower and I'm going to set up some seedlings and once I've sort of cleared out my little garden patch and popped those in and got them growing then I'll share some more footage of my rather odd looking little garden. So I hope you're well, uh, I hope that you're getting lots of crafting done and I will hopefully have some new projects on the go but don't forget to pop by the Ravelry group and enter into the Quiet Day Shawl Get Along Give, give along, <laughs> give away, um, or pop your comment into YouTube. And I'll see you soon.